Hi everyone, I'm Sarah from Ontario Honey Creations and this is Peter from Toronto Bee Rescue. Today we're here at our hives at Adamo Estate Winery. Toronto Bee Rescue started in 2012 and it began with our first two hives. We, we put in an ad to collect uh, swarms and we, were in, we got a lot of calls about swarms in the city of Toronto as well as bees in people's homes. Yeah. So we, we've, we learned how to remove bees from people's homes and that was how Toronto Bee Rescue expanded and so did our bee operation with that. Yeah, and then shortly after that, in 2015, we began Ontario Honey Creations as a way to branch out um, and start offering a variety of different products, um, such as the honey vinegars, our terroir honey, and now our honey wines, or mead. So how Toronto Bee Rescue started was totally by accident. It was on a whim. Um, Peter came up with this idea, uh, and he'll tell you a little bit more about that. We just simply put an add-on Kijiji mm -hmm. to collect swarms of bees so when they're available in the city and people started calling us about swarms but we also started getting calls about bees in people's homes and uh, we decided to to try removing bees and as we removed one or two hives from someone's home we got better at it got better equipment and we decided to focus on that through toronto bee rescue yeah there was some history before that as well um peter had a bit of a background as a hobby beekeeper um and i was willing to learn so we jumped in um with the some renovation experience that we had and and took a stab at it um we were doing this uh, as we were working our corporate full-time jobs um and then kind of moonlighting so after work we would go out five till 11 o'clock at night and do these cutouts in people's homes and different structures and then it's gotten to the point where um about what three years ago peter left corporate um and then i left about five years ago where now we're both full-time beekeepers with toronto bee rescue what we do we offer two different services one includes uh, honeybee swarm removals and the other is a cutout a honeybee swarm is essentially a big ball of bees and what they've done is they've left their original um, mother colony, to, so to speak, as a way to um, branch out and start another colony. So they have gorged on honey before they left their hive and they're just temporarily resting on a structure. It can be a man-made structure. Um, we've had some in, on bicycles, cars, and then the more natural set, um, setting on branch leaves or, or tree leaves. And when that happens, we simply just cut the tree branch off um, and then gently sit, shake it off into like a hive box like one of these here. And we then humanely re remove those and bring them to one of our apiaries or bee yards. Um, the other option is the cutouts that Peter provides as well. He can tell you a little bit more about that. So when, when bees swarm, they're looking for a new home, which, could, which is usually a hollow tree, but in an urban environment, it could be someone's home. So bees will find a little hole in a, in a wall and then go into, into that space and rebuild their colony, similar to what you see in a, a beehive. They build that in your wall. And to remove them, we, ha we have to open the hive. So either from inside the house or from the outside, remove a wall and then slowly take apart the hive piece by piece. And uh, we collect the bees in a vacuum, which gently sucks them up. And then we could shake those bees onto the new hive. When we get a, s a swarm call, we uh, basically collect a, get a ladder in our car, a box, put the bees in and we drive out to the location, set up the ladder, shake the bees into the box. So if they're in a nice cone shape, we just shake the branch, the bees all fall in, seal the box, we put that in our vehicle, and we drive to a bee yard like this one here, and we, we shake the bees into another box, where, which becomes their permanent home. So in our uh, bee yards, we, we keep uh, many hives in, in the area. So around us, you see every, uh, every box is its own hive. So each hive here has its own queen and its own cluster of bees inside. So when you bring a swarm or rescued hive, we, we put it into a new box that's empty. We add the frames and then the bees rebuild their, their current uh, hive. So, and then as the season progresses, we take care of the bees in the, in, their, in the yard. So in each hive, we make sure there's a queen in each hive. We add uh, boxes vertically as they need more space for more baby bees or for honey. And in the summer, as, we, as they create honey, we take some honey away, we harvest it and always make sure the bees have enough for the winter. As a beekeeper, we're, we're in charge of managing the health of our colonies. So as we, we visit the bees starting in the early spring, make mm -hmm. sure they have 
uh, enough food and uh, pollen in their hives to start the spring off on a good foot. And as, as the bees grow in the spring, so do the, the varroa mites that live on or in the hives. So we have to make sure that the varroa mites are uh, kept under control. So we use different organic treatments, different uh, acids like formic or oxalic acid treatments to keep the varroa down and the bees healthy. Uh, when we get ready to work in a bee yard, we uh, always wear our uh, bee suits. So, you know, the bees can, are usually gentle and calm, but mm -hmm. working in a yard with multiple hives, you never know if you're going to get stung. So we wear our bee suits. We turn on a smoker. The smoker hides the bees' pheromones, so it keeps the bees calm. So we can work the hives without getting them too upset. And then for uh, different treatments for varroa mites, we use uh, the pads that we lay on top of the hives and those uh, pads release specific organic acids that help uh, kill the varroa mites. We, we spend a lot of time <clears throat> keeping our bees healthy and uh, treating varroa mites, but we also have to protect our bees from other predators such as bears. So yeah. in yards north of the, the city of Toronto, we have to put electric fences around the, the hives to make mm -hmm. sure any bear that comes out of hibernation in the spring that's looking for a snack doesn't, doesn't find our bees. Yeah. Bears come to could smell the bees from uh, from a distance, and they they know that the bees are full of uh, brood, which is the baby bees, and they're looking they're looking for some protein. So they halfway come into your hive, yeah. they'll flip over in, entire pallets of bees, roll it down hills into the valleys, and then slowly eat the the brood and some of the honey. So they could be pretty destructive. Could mm -hmm. destroy all your equipment, break the frames, and you could be walking for for hundreds of meters looking for the equipment as they you know, drag it out of your bee yard. Yeah. In the media, you, you hear, you see articles about bees in decline, which is true. Native bees, such as bumblebees in Ontario, are declining. Mm -hmm. And honeybees, it's a struggle to keep them alive. So as a beekeeper, we have to, you know, stay current on the science, learn about the different pests that are in the hives and make sure we are responsible and take care of the bees and, and make sure the mites are under control to keep our bees alive. Otherwise, they, they will, they can uh, die from the pest mm -hmm. and spread diseases to other colonies in the area. Yeah. Honeybees specifically are very important to the to pollination of our agricultural crops um, and the wild flowers throughout uh, nature and various trees as well. So keeping them healthy and happy um, maintains that fine balance. When we're harvesting our honey, we're harvesting in small batches based on the season and the bee yard location. You'll get a variety of different tastes depending on what flowers and the flora and fauna the bees are foraging on. For instance, you'll see our headwaters spring blossom honey here. These guys, they're first of all crystallized, so you'll notice the texture is different. Um, totally natural, that's one of the benefits of local raw honey is that it will eventually harden up. If you like it liquid, you just gently warm it up again. The spring honeys tend to be the more mild of the honeys. Um, and then as the season progresses, you'll get a variety of different tastes. The summer blossom here is from our bees in Bell Fountain. And this one tastes more like a traditional kind of everyday honey. And then over here, we have our Orangeville uh, fall blossom honey. This one much more floral, it's actually my preference, um, a lot more flavor to it and slightly stronger than the other two seasons. So from our seasonal terroir honeys, we uh, produce a variety of different products from those. So as the base with the summer blossom honey, we tend to use this one um, as the base of all of our fermentations just because it is more traditional. Um, one of the first things we do, our newest product is the mead, the honey wine. Um, this here is a, a 2018 dry mead and we have used uh, the, our summer blossom honey to naturally ferment over time um, to create the, it's nearly bone dry at 1.8% uh, residual sugar. And it is um, one of the oldest uh, alcoholic beverages out in the world. So this one was aged for two years, so it's nicely balanced. Um, we also do another fermentation with our honey. It's called honey vinegar. This one in particular is our honey garlic vinegar. Uh, and it used a garlic that was grown on our farm, uh, our family farm out in uh, Amaranth. Um, and this here, how we make that, we first uh, produce mead, honey wine, and then the second fermentation, we use what's called the static fermentation process, and then turn that into the vinegar itself. 
it is an age for six months and that um, kind of balances the acidity in the finish so that it's not so so sharp and um, from this particular fermentation we have five different uh, products including the honey vinegar honey garlic honey apple cider honey raspberry and a buckwheat malt vinegar and then one of the last final products that we make is also a spicy hot honey this one's infused with ghost peppers and chilies. Definitely has a kick. It's amazing drizzled over uh, baked brie, various cheeses. You can also use it as um, on barbecues with chicken wings or, or pork, things like that as well. We have some exciting news in that we recently moved just over a month ago up to the hills of Melmer. Um, and we're, we have a roadside stand where it has all of our honey products. You can also order online at my honeycreations.com and then we will have some agritourism activities coming in um, the year 2021 as well. Thank you for visiting Ontario Honey Creations. We'll see you again next season.